Hello, I'm Joseph Albert, Editor-in-Chief of the American Journal of Medicine, and I'm here to call your attention uh, to uh, a very, very interesting article um, in the July issue of the journal. By the way, um, those of you who can see, notice that I'm not wearing my usual uh, uh, tie and, and shirt. Um, I'm uh, in scrubs because for the last three and a half months, I've been doing inpatients, uh, um, you know, in, in the COVID time. Not on the COVID ward, of course. I'm really not competent for that. We have a whole specialized hospitalist group doing that with the, with the uh, pulmonary critical care uh, intensivists. Um, but of course, there's lots of other patients sick. I've been doing internal medicine wards, cardiology consults, coronary care unit. Um, the hospital continues to go, even though a third of the hospital is filled with COVID, two thirds are still the usual folks uh, that, that we see. Well, so um, let's talk about an article that I thought was very interesting, Harbash et al. So what Harbash et al did was they assembled almost 100 patients who had severe end-stage heart failure, uh, who are not transplant candidates, who are not candidates to get one of the devices. And so, and they're on maximum medicines, you've done the best you can do. So what do you do at that point? Um, very often these people are dependent upon intravenous pressors, dibutamine or milrinone. And what the Harbash et al did was they collected a hundred patients uh, uh, from several hospitals who ended up getting continuous infusions of milrinone when they went home. Now we know that basically uh, what we're doing is sort of whipping a tired horse to make it run a little faster. And we know that um, it may actually speed uh, uh, the rate of, uh, uh, of death in, in these people, but it relieves their symptoms and they feel good and they're able to function. And in fact, the mean follow-up of survival here was almost two years. Um, uh, on these infusions. So that's very good news. Uh, uh, in fact, that's about as good as many of the, of the aggressive treatments for end-stage cancer. Um, the patients were able to function, they felt fine. Um, and, and so I, I think this is uh, definitely something um, that uh, uh, needs to continue. Um, I know we get similar results also with intra intravenous dibutamine sending patients home. Um, but the good news is that people can have good quality of life and it isn't just a few weeks. Um, it stretches out, um, you know, uh, well over a year and, and, and sometimes even into two years. Uh, so um, please take a look at Harbash et al. in the July issue.